everyone. Uh, welcome back to Art of the Unquiet Grave. I'm Ash and I'm really excited because today we're going to be delving into our first project since I sort of revived my channel, brought it back from the dead if you will, pun intended, um, in any event. <laughs> so if you happen to watch my channel reintroduction video that I just uploaded, uh, I mentioned in there that the first project that we were going to be working on was a Cabinet of Curiosities inspired project. <laughs> so um, I think I'm going to be breaking it down into four different elements though. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you what those will be in a second. But I feel like I have a lot to say on like each specific component of the cabinet. So I'll just go ahead and kind of give you a quick overview of what a cabinet of curiosities is and means in the history of it, in case you're not familiar. So I'm a big Victorian <laughs> era lover. Um, I think that was a really interesting period of history. They had a lot of interesting mourning culture and um, medical innovations, and I'm very into antiquated medicines and oddities. So that's kind of where this whole piece is coming into play. But in the 1800s, Cabinet of Curiosities were basically items or displays of talking pieces or exotic items that um, typically the people would collect when they were on travels or, you know, more affluent people had these big grandiose cabinets that had all of these unusual or um, sometimes frightening items in them. The first element that we're going to be working on is a skeleton. So now it's, it's not going to be real skeleton, just in case anybody you know is, is concerned about that, or like a cruelty-free element. Um, it is going to be a replica of fetal skeletons though. So if that happens to bother you in any way, then you know, you can feel free to, to skip this part here. But um, a little fact about me is that I am an identical twin. So <laughs> my entire life I've been very interested with twins, specifically Siamese twins. Um, and actually, I don't know if you can tell that was the wrong arm. I have a Siamese twin tattoo over here that I got when I was a teenager. Um, but in any event, um, this was kind of like a piece to sort of, you know, honor my my sister so I don't know if she likes it or not but anyway um, what we're gonna be working on is the the skeleton portion that's going to be going in our cabinet it's going to be our you know our main component here um, now I don't know if anybody has ever kind of browsed or perused <laughs> skeleton replicas before but they can get obscenely pricey and like I said before if you happen to watch that first video I want to keep all the projects like fairly accessible so that everybody can do them. So I found an anatomical Siamese skeleton replica um, that was all between like $25 and $30, but obviously it's not the most realistic looking, right? So I'm going to show you how you can take, you know, plastic or resin skeletons and make them look realistic and do it with like very minimal supplies and, you know, minimal time involvement <laughs> for you too. So you can get the most bang for your buck there and make it like a really interesting display piece. So I'll go ahead and I'll put links to what I can um, down below for like the products that I use and things, but we're gonna go ahead and jump into aging our skeleton replica here. Okay, so first I'm just taking some matte finish uh, acrylic paint in a dark brown shade and I'm dry brushing that into all of the orifices on the skull here so the eye sockets the nasal cavity and the mouth and then I'm just uh, wiping that back with a dry paper towel to make sure that it looks more natural and that it doesn't look too opaque and oversaturated um, but if you feel like you've over wiped and you've taken too much away you can keep putting it on in layers until you get the look that you like. So next I'm just taking a fine tipped brush here and I'm taking that same dark brown acrylic paint and brushing that into all of the crevices on the skull and in the soft spot. And I'm just letting that dry. I'm not wiping that back because all of the cartilage areas on the skulls and the skeletons in the body have these this odd salmony pink shade that was hard to cover. So you just want to make sure that you let that dry completely uh, before we do our um, yellow wash all over the skeletons. Unfortunately, my camera cut out when I was doing that part, but all you're going to do is take a little bit of yellow paint, mix it with a dab of uh, like a light brown, and mix it with water and brush that over uh, the whole top of the skulls here. 
And then you're just going, after you do that step and let it dry, you're going to go back in with your dark brown acrylic paint and you're going to stipple that on and all those crevices again, just to sort of blend the initial layer that you put down and then that, that wet wash layer. And it'll just kind of uh, make it look a little more seamless and realistic. So I did want to point out, you can see here that those skulls have um, these two big screws on either side holding the jaw in with like a hinge. And I felt like that was distracting, so I did end up removing that later, but uh, unfortunately cameras cut out on that too. So some technical issues here, but there you go. You can see the skulls um, with their complete paint job on them, and now we're going to move on to the body. So you're going to do the same thing on the body that we did uh, on the skulls here. You're just going to take that dark brown acrylic paint and you're going to stipple that on all over those pink salmon cartilage areas and make sure that you have them all covered. So you're going to work it into all the crevices there around the rib cage and uh, the vertebrae on the spine. You're going to let that dry and then you're going to do that same white wet wash with that yellowy brown shade and you can customize that to look however you want. Um, I was actually using my favorite conjoined twin skeleton from the Mütter Museum in Philadelphia as a reference and I'll show you that at the end here just so you can see a comparison um, from how ours look to the one that I used for the reference. Um, but then I go ahead and I just, I'm, I'm putting the head on here, but they have these two metal posts that fit into these pre-drilled holes in the spine and they weren't quite fitting, so I just got some needle nose pliers and sort of squished them together a little bit to make them more narrow so they would fit in those holes. And now that I see that it fits, I'm just taking some super glue and I'm putting a few dots on it there just to make sure that, that head's not going to go anywhere uh, when we put them in the cabinet and we do the rest of our um, little presentation for them here. So once you put the super glue on, you're just going to make sure you hold the head for a few seconds and make sure that everything sets. And I did have the same issue with those two posts on the other skull as well. So I went ahead and squished them with those uh, needle nose pliers to make sure that they fit. And I'm popping the head on here. I also put a little dab of super glue on there as well. So I'm just holding the head in place like I did the first head, making sure that everything is nice and set. So this skeleton did come with a display stand. Um, there's a metal rod that goes in their spine, which I felt was kind of, <laughs> seemed kind of brutal and I felt bad doing it to them. But anyway, um, it's a tight squeeze. So you kind of have to like wiggle that rod in the base of their spine there where that pre-drilled hole is and then put some pressure on it. So I found it was easier to just stand them upright and sort of use that table that I'm working on um, just to sort of force that post into place. Now the base that they came with is sort of a flimsy plastic and it would work fine, but uh, I did end up upgrading that later um, and just sort of making a permanent home for them in the case that I built or that I'm modifying for them. But you could get another wooden plaque from Michaels or something a little more stable for a few dollars if you wanted to upgrade it, but this will work fine. So it came with these little nuts and bolts that um, screw onto that post that's in their spine and that that's what attaches them to that base. So there's maybe about an inch or so of threading on the bottom there. So I'm just working that, um, that nut up to the top of that threading. Now, if you were going to leave them on here as their like permanent base, I would say put a dab of super glue on there too, just to make sure that that nut doesn't come loose. I'm just sticking that on the base here and then we're going to flip it over and uh, put that other nut on the bottom just to hold everything together. Okay, and here's that second nut that I was talking about. So we're just going to go ahead and screw that into place as well. Then after they're on the base and the paint's all dry, I'm going to go ahead and take some Mod Podge uh, acrylic spray sealant and I'm just going to go over that whole thing. Um, I did like the satin finish. I wanted to have a bit of sheen, but nothing glossy that would look unrealistic. So this is a picture before of what the image looked like on the website that I ordered them from. This is what they looked like when they arrived to me in person. 
There's a close up. You can see that salmony pink cartilage in the ribs and then the shoulders there. This is that real skeleton that I was referencing from the Mooter. And here's our skeletons after they're all painted and sealed. And here's just one more uh, image of before and after side by side. Okay, so our twins are done and I'm really excited with how they turned out. I think they look great. Um, but the only problem that I'm running into is that I, I feel like they really desperately need names <laughs> and I'm drawing a blank here. So if anybody happens to have any ideas for what we should name our twins, can you please drop a comment below and let me know what you think? Um, if you have any thoughts or something, cause I feel like, I feel like it's too impersonal. <laughs> they need names and I name everything, but for some reason I'm drawing a blank. So if you could help me, I would appreciate that. But anyway, um, so that was the first piece of our project done. Our, the stars of our cabinet of curiosity are finished and now we just have to work on the other elements. So I assume you probably imagined that part two of our project here for cabinet of curiosities will be the cabinet. <laughs> so we have what we're going to put in the cabinet now, but now we need the cabinet itself. So we'll go ahead and we'll jump to the next video. Next time I see you, we'll be working on refinishing the cabinet that we're going to be putting the twins in. So stay tuned for that. All right. Thank you. Bye.